Julie Meyer and Ariadne Capital is really a group of entrepreneurs. Uh, the whole model is entrepreneurs backing entrepreneurs. So uh, I've assembled 46 uh, successful entrepreneurs who built businesses in the internet, gaming, semiconductors, the founders of businesses like Hotmail, Betfair, Last Minute, Sporting Bet, SES Astra. And these people are my shareholders, and then they are investors in the next generation of entrepreneurs creating a virtuous circle because um, the model I felt for where's the best capital is to get it from entrepreneurs who've built similar businesses to um, so they would have some sort of insight into the next generation of businesses in that sector. So we try to connect very specifically entrepreneur to entrepreneur and to create that virtuous circle. We're in our eighth year, can scarcely believe it. Ariadne, of course, was the Greek princess who helped Theseus get through the labyrinth, if you know your Greek mythology. And I thought, well, that's actually kind of what we do. We help entrepreneurs get through the labyrinth, whatever that is, whether it's finding capital, the right people, working on the go-to-market strategy. Um, it's my 10th year anniversary in the UK, so I came here about this time, actually, in 1998 and have been working with entrepreneurs in three ventures since then. Had some uh, good opportunities with uh, Brent and Martha helping them raise their first round of funding in 98 for lastminute.com and, um, and then setting up First Tuesday, which was a network of entrepreneurs. At Ariadne Capital, we see about 50 companies every month, and so uh, for the past seven years or so, um, I've tried to distill down what some of the um, kind of tricks of the or tips that I would give you here momentarily. We, our companies have raised about 20 million pounds every year, although um, to the point that was raised earlier, I think the good news is there's, there's lots of money in the market. It's not that things have shut down. One of our companies, uh, led by Christina Domecq, raised 50 million sterling, closed it last month. Um, bringing to 100 million sterling the amount of capital in her company. It's doing phenomenally well. And so I think, you know, just when you think there's so much, you pick up the Financial Times or whatever newspaper and you can feel incredibly depressed. Why is it the right time to set up my business? It's actually absolutely the right time. If you look at the companies that have done well actually in 2007, 2006, 7, and 8, and so forth, they were actually building their businesses in 2003, 4, and 5. So you really got to build counter cyclically. That's actually the one moment you can get significantly ahead because so many people kind of get scared, run off and work in the so-called Called, you know, supposedly safe corporate environments, but you can make tremendous headway if you've got the um, courage to build your business in a market downturn. So, a couple of uh, general principles and some ideas on investor management and um, and so forth, and I'll run through these kind of pretty fast here. In brief, if you can, and it kind of goes a little bit against what we're doing here tonight, but this is fun and, and well structured and so forth. Is you never really want to be a supplicant for cash. You always want to build a relationship with your potential investor if you can. And if you're there, and you are essentially a supplicant for cash and you need to you know, basically um, pitch for the money, what you want to uh, be perceived as is an authority in your space and look for ways of bringing something to your investor, certainly doing your research on them and so forth. So I always think, just like, just like a credit card, you always need to raise money when you don't need it as well. So should you get your first round of funding after your, say, friends and family round from a group of private investors, um, there's a lot to be said for raising funding back to back so that when you have your last round of funding in the bank, you're already looking for the next round of funding and you don't find yourself in situations with like two months to go, with two months of cash desperately, you know, against the wall and so forth. So always raise capital when you don't need it, if at all possible. I always think also um, entrepreneurs focus very much on the first valuation round. And really what you should be worried about with the first outside investors that you get in your business is getting um, the right money. And what I mean by that is the most comfortable money and the most value add money. If anything kind of feels awkward or you think, I've had people say, well, I'm going to take money from so and so, but you know, I'm really nervous because I understand that they really you know, mess people over. Well, why would you do that? Why would you bring investors into your business that, you're, that you don't feel that you trust? Um, so comfortable money, value added money. Um, and that should be your primary goal in bringing the first kind of outside investors in. And then you need to prove yourself. You need to hit the milestones that you told those investors in getting that money on board so that hopefully in the second round of funding you can really take a jump up in the valuation. But I see people enormously fixated on um, thinking that the first round of valuation needs to be sky high or they're not a success. And really what you need to think of is what's the trajectory of my business? 
So um, a lot of the kind of financing difficulties come out of setting up too complex of structures. Um, we'll see companies come through and say, well, I've got like this, this matrix organization of five, you know, three subsidiaries, and we want you to invest in the lower subsidiary down here. And it, well, no, never would you do that. It should be as simple as possible. Startup companies should be really, I, I can't imagine that many good reasons other than one company where the value is accruing. And maybe when you're selling 100 million sterling of something, there might be reasons for setting up subsidiaries, but probably not at the beginning unless you have some sort of offshore IP structure. So keep it simple um, and uh, really think through if you're creating uh, financeability issues for down the line. And listen, if anybody's giving you that feedback and saying, I think what you're doing here is going to create a, a problem for you down the line, really pay attention to what they're saying. Stage your money to milestones. You should be prepared for the question, you know, what are you going to achieve with this money? Um, and in fact, I think you should offer that to potential investors to say, you know, with this 600,000 pounds, we're going to be ready with product 1.0. We're going to hit this kind of demo, or beta, et cetera. We've already got our beta testers lined up. Be prepared. Money enables you to hit a milestone. And really think through and give yourself some buffer there because should you miss the milestone, it is difficult to go back to the money and explain that you missed the milestone and you're asking for more money not having hit it. Um, when you put together your projections on how you're, um, you know, what you're going to do, bottom them up. So rather than saying the um, phone, mar the addressable market for my product is two billion around the world because everybody has a mobile phone. Think about how you're going to do it, you know, the particular application, whether it's locally, how you're selling through it, your initial customers, and bottom up the projections, which always feels more real than to say Gartner Group predicts that everybody in the year 2015 is going to have, you know, mobile phones, therefore I'm going to have 2% of the market. I would say, finally, focus on your go-to-market strategy. If you can think through anything which is similar about your go-to-market, how you're going to take your product or service to market, and, um, and relate it to another successful venture, and say, well, Julie Meyer's uh, coffee shop is going to roll out just like Starbucks did it, and this is why, and this is why it's credible to believe that Julie Meyer's coffee shop is going to be like Starbucks. Anything where you can relate it to something which is known, which is successful, and to say, you know, this is the, the A of B sector. Give people an anchor point, but show them that you've thought through the various steps to take it to market. Um, because the single biggest thing that people fail to, to think about is the marketing of it. They build things and they believe that people will naturally gravitate to them because they're so great. And in fact, building an audience, building a customer base is extremely difficult. Um, just some quick points on investor management. Bring some news to them. Make sure that they see you as an authority, that you've, you know, you're reading the papers, you know about them, you've done your research. Um, never let them know that they're the only game in town. They don't respond well to that. So um, you don't want to lie, but you do want to be talking to multiple, be in multiple dialogues with investors. Don't assume you have the money until it's in the bank. Don't start spending it or making financial commitments until you have the money in the bank. And also, you know, investors, people with money, they like to provoke you, right? So if you're in a situation, they might, you know, kind of really test you and say, well, who are you to run this business? The whole point is to not lose your cool, right? The, they're, they're trying to understand how you are when you're provoked, when you're in an in an ambiguous situation and so forth. So, you know, be ready for the curveballs. Um, rehearse your presentation. Do it in front of a mirror. Don't just walk in there and say, you know, I'm pretty good on my feet and I, you know, kind of blah, blah, blah. No, rehearse it. Make sure then think through the, do the Q&A. I expect to be asked these kinds of questions. And um, finally, I would just say, never give up. Never accept no and never go away. So just keep on um, keeping on. A lot of very successful companies, companies that we've worked with like Skype, took them um, 18 months to raise money. Hopefully, it won't take you that long. But the point is, is that um, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of training, like an athlete, to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. Julie.